Okay, so today I'm going to talk about something I've honestly been really nervous to talk about. It's a part of my life that I've been basically hiding for the past number of months and that I have been avoiding discussing on this channel just because of fear of stigma, fear of judgment. I have a lot of fear around people just putting labels on me in one way or another, thinking I'm less capable now. Also fear that people think I'm seeking attention or something like that. But honestly, I've realized after a lot of thought that I do want to talk about it because it's something that's a really big part of my life now. And it would be like hiding a big part of myself. And if I were to do that, I don't think I could be fully real and fully authentic on this channel. And maybe even some of that lack of authenticity has somehow come through on some of my videos and that I haven't been talking about this. I don't think I tend to talk about personal stuff much on this channel, but I've realized that being vulnerable can often be very freeing in that it allows you to just fully be yourself, whatever other ramifications there might be. And I think the other reason why I'm talking about this is that throughout this entire experience, the biggest thing that has helped me is other people's vulnerability in telling their stories. When I've heard other people's stories that were similar to mine, or even that were a little bit different, but that I could connect with, I felt so much better. I felt less alone. And for me, isolation is honestly one of the hardest parts of this entire process, feeling totally alone and like nobody gets it. So I've realized that if even one or two people watch this video and connect with it or feel like they're not alone, it will be worth it. And I also feel like so often people online just only promote the happiest, brightest, prettiest parts of their lives, but they're not willing to go there to go to those messier, more complicated, unhappy parts of life. And I think it's important to recognize and even celebrate all parts of life. And so that's what I'm trying to do here is to just be fully real and tell you everything. Also, sorry, the light keeps changing. I'm just doing this in my living room so that I can be physically as comfortable as possible. I also have to say, I really don't have any notes for this video. Usually I have, you know, points I'm going to get to. I've realized I'm just going to shoot this unfiltered, see what happens. And hopefully that will allow this video to be the most true to my experience. Forgive the preamble, I'm just nervous and I think explaining my reasoning for going into this helps me feel more comfortable. So I'm going to tell you my story. It all started about eight or nine months ago, basically end of September 2021. I started having really intense vertigo and dizziness feeling like the room was moving and even spinning around me and also just feeling lightheaded and woozy. I also felt really weak, a ton of fatigue, like just feeling like all my energy was ripped from me. Then I started experiencing double vision where I was literally seeing everything two times. Like I'd look outside and see two mailboxes instead of one, or I'd see two red trucks instead of one. And there were even times where I'd look and I would genuinely wonder, are there two trees there or just one? And then I would realize, oh, this time there actually are two, but I thought maybe it was just the double vision. Anyway, it was the weirdest thing. But somehow there's this human capacity for minimizing things because I thought, oh, like, maybe I'm just stressed out and I'm tired and maybe it's related to my migraines because I sometimes get those. And so I just kind of like didn't think it was that big of a deal. But then when I got double vision and it got suddenly worse, my sister finally said, Aylin, you need to go to the ER. I'm going to drive you. And so I went and it was a long day. I had to be in there alone because of COVID and then I got in and, you know, just classic ER experience. I'd always considered myself a really healthy person. And I just never even fathomed that there would be anything that they would find. 
Like I truly believed that I would just be sent home. Eventually the doctor said, you know, let's give you an MRI just to check to see if anything's causing this in your brain. And so I got the MRI. My husband, Andy, was waiting in the car in the parking lot for hours and hours, which that was so kind of him. Such a comfort to know he was there. But I was in there alone, got the MRI, came back, was waiting for the results and for the doctor to come back in, lying there in the hospital bed with my hospital gown on. And I checked my phone because I got a notification that I had a new test result. And I opened it up. And what I saw was the report from the MRI, which basically said that I had lesions in my brain, a bunch of them, well over 20. And I just was in total shock. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know, was this brain cancer? Was this something else what was going on i immediately thought i'm gonna die and i don't think i've ever actually said that out loud that in that moment i thought i would you know have months to live but that's what i thought that was my first reaction i just started thinking like how am i going to spend this time but then i also reassured myself like this could be something else we don't know what this is yet i tried to pull myself together because i hadn't even seen the doctor yet eventually the doctor did come in he very quickly matter of factly told me they found a number of lesions in my brain he went on to say it's very likely that you have multiple sclerosis or ms and i just started crying i couldn't help it because I also knew a little bit about MS. I had actually been a therapist for people with MS in the past. I've also had people in my life with MS. I've had people in my life who are functioning really, really highly with MS. And I've known people who have not done so well and have lost a lot of capacity to do things. I was in shock. I was glad that at least this meant I didn't have like two months to live, but it was just incredibly shocking. You know, at that point, I even asked, you know, can my husband come in to hear this potential diagnosis? I really wanted him there to be able to ask the doctor questions because I was just in shock and I didn't know what to ask. And they wouldn't let me have him come in because of COVID, which I do understand but it was really hard at the time to be getting basically a diagnosis. I mean, that wasn't my official diagnosis at that point, but to basically be told this is probably what you have, I think was incredibly upsetting to have to do that alone. So that was really shocking. I went to the car, told Andy, we both just sat there in that parking lot in the car and cried because I think we both knew that it could mean a lot of things, a lot of different things, but that it would definitely impact our lives forever. So then I don't necessarily need to go into every detail of every doctor's visit after that, but basically we got connected with a longer term doctor. I had more tests done. I got on infusions of steroids, I think three or five days of infusions on steroids to help reduce the immediate flare. For those of you who don't know much about MS, it basically is an autoimmune condition where your body attacks itself and specifically your central nervous system. So your body attacks your neurons and it degrades the myelin sheaths that are on the axons of your neurons. So it slows down impulses. So basically it makes it difficult for messages to be sent throughout your body. And this can impact your body in a variety of ways. It can impact your vision. It can impact your ability to feel. So it can cause numbness and tingling. It can cause loss of function. So not being able to move parts of your body or use them correctly. So quite often you might be limited in your ability to walk or to do things. Quite often people with MS need to use assistance to walk or are required to use a wheelchair. It can also affect um, things like digestion. It can 
impact your cognitions. So if basically your connections in your brain are moving more slowly, it can be difficult to think. It also really impacts your energy levels, not only because the messages being sent around your body are slow, but it's also attacking itself. And I've also learned in the process that part of what makes you so tired is that sometimes when you have lesions in your brain, your brain is trying to counteract for those lesions and work really hard to help you to keep functioning. And so because it's trying to work hard to handle these symptoms, it can make you incredibly tired because it's like your brain is working extra, extra hard all the time. So it can lead to extreme fatigue and it can also lead to pain at times. Anyway, there are a variety of symptoms, but I will also say that it really varies person to person. And that's something important about MS to understand is that every single person's experience of it is quite different. And the severity, also what types of symptoms you have and the severity of each of those symptoms and how often you have symptoms, whether they stay or whether they come and go. And it can look very, very different, which also often makes diagnosis very difficult. So in that sense, I was very lucky that they immediately did get me into testing, which involved a spinal tap. And unfortunately for me, I had a really bad reaction to the spinal tap, which is uncommon. Most people don't have this type of reaction, so it shouldn't be something that makes you afraid. But I had what's called a spinal headache. So I went back into the hospital to get a blood patch, which is basically where they take blood from your body and push it with a ton of pressure into your spinal cord or canal. That is the weirdest sensation I've ever experienced. Not to mention they had so much trouble drawing blood from me that they had to wait and keep trying. And I just remember this moment lying where they were going to do the blood patch and just having like three different people poking different parts of my body. My elbows, my arms are already like black and blue here and here from all the times I had been tested and prodded and had blood taken. So they had to do a poke of my femoral vein, which was kind of scary in that they have to poke you down there and then flip you over, but keep putting pressure on it so you don't like bleed out while they do the blood patch. It was all just a very unpleasant, painful experience. And then after I got the blood patch, I experienced excruciating pain, which luckily I found out later wasn't related to the MS, was a reaction to that procedure, but I had shooting pain up and down my spine, into my head, down to my feet. It was hard to bend over. I couldn't do anything really. I had to be on bed rest and some of the worst pain I've ever experienced in my life. <sighs> Gosh, there's just so much to tell, but basically I was in and out going back and forth to the hospital. And eventually then I met with my doctor and I was told that I did have a diagnosis of MS. And the scary thing was my pain still hadn't resolved. Also, even after the steroid infusions, which were supposed to help with that immediate flare, that immediate kind of uprising of symptoms, they hadn't yet dissipated. And so I was still experiencing a lot of symptoms, which was really overwhelming and scary. I was still feeling dizzy, still feeling vertigo, still feeling really tired, still at times experiencing double vision, just lots of stuff. I also, at this point, I don't think I mentioned, but I had like a bunch more MRIs because some of the MRIs didn't like show up very well. And then I had to retake them and some MRIs were ordered without contrast. And then they had to redo them with contrast. You know, if you have MS, you get a lot of MRIs. But basically there are some other details about why my case got a little bit more complicated and difficult, but I don't necessarily need to go into all that Basically, though, I was spending a lot of time at the hospital and experiencing horrible pain, experiencing really debilitating symptoms, and eventually they did start to improve a bit. But now I'm in a place where I still do have MS symptoms, and that's the scary part for me now is that I probably will always have symptoms or it's very likely that I will. I'm still experiencing dizziness literally all the time. Not a moment does it break. 
And that on its own is a huge barrier, challenge, difficulty, and takes a huge psychological toll. It's weird. It just always feels like, ooh, like the world is kind of like, ooh. I also have regular sizzling in my legs. I don't think I even mentioned that symptom yet. Kind of like tingling, but more like sizzling. Like it's kind of the sensation of like salt and pepper wars that you see on TV when it's like, or at least you used to back in the day where it's like, that's how I feel in my legs a lot of the time. Also, when I got a bunch of follow-up MRIs, I do have lesions down my spine which I think my understanding is that it increases the likelihood that eventually I may lose mobility in some ways, especially because basically once you have a lesion, that tissue in your brain isn't healthy anymore. And eventually it could just kind of die away. And what's also scary is that even with the treatment that I'm on now, it's a treatment that is preventative of future lesions developing, but it doesn't treat past lesions. So the lesions that are there will likely always, you know, be there and impacting my functioning. And there's no guarantee that future lesions won't happen. It just greatly reduces the likelihood of that progression or the speed of that progression. Basically with my symptoms, I also just have total fatigue, so much fatigue. Sometimes it'll just hit me like a brick wall. It's like next level fatigue. It feels like if you've ever been jet lagged, like really bad, bad jet lag where it's just like, I cannot function. And the dizziness that I mentioned before, it's caused probably by one of my lesions that's on my brain stem that helps with balance. So balance is really tough for me. It's kind of ironic because I always used to be really good at balancing. Like that was one of my random strengths, and now it's one of my flaws. It's funny how that happens. Also, I think one of the scariest bits of my symptoms are the cognitive effects. So personally, I've noticed, and Andy has also mentioned he's noticed it too, that my cognitions have slowed in some ways. Sometimes I have trouble finding words. I'm also just a little bit more forgetful in certain ways. And thinking sometimes just feels very hard. It's hard to be my full self, like in the past, I think I've been a very social person and I feel like I can't fully be as adept in social situations as I used to be just because conversation is a little bit more difficult. And I think what's complicated about that is if you're watching this, you might think you seem totally fine. And that's another piece that's kind of hard about this is that from the outside, unless you know me really, really well, and are around me day to day, you might not even be able to tell, which is actually kind of a gift. I'm grateful for it, but it also is a curse in that I think implicitly I've sensed, and I guess I can't speak for them, but I've sensed that people in my life kind of question my symptoms. And I could be wrong about that. Maybe I'm playing my own mind games, but I kind of feel like people think I seem fine, so I must be fine. And that is one of the most isolating things is feeling like people think you're fine or that, I don't know, sometimes I worry that people think I'm complaining too much. And so I just don't talk about it. And I just try to be goofy and fun and in the moment. And that's great. But it can be really isolating because then I'm never talking about what I'm experiencing. And then other times I'll suddenly talk about it to really close friends or something, but then I feel kind of like I'm burdening them or that I'm ruining the mood. Or I worry like sometimes when I complain that they think that I'm making a bigger deal out of it than it is because I do seem fine from the outside in a lot of ways. And I feel like that is like the biggest battle for me in that I don't know how to balance that. And even right now, I feel like I don't want to be a downer, especially if you're somebody who's going through an MS diagnosis and you're really scared and you're wondering what the future holds. It is important to remember that everybody's journey is different. And actually, in a lot of ways, I'm very lucky that I'm able to function at the level that I still am able to function at. Like, I am still able to do a lot of the things that I used to be able to do. But it's also hard because like even just going on a simple walk sometimes takes everything out of me. And sometimes it's so frustrating that 
people just take for granted what they're able to do. All these symptoms on a regular basis, it really impacts my ability to do things. And it's very frustrating. And I don't know how to relate that to other people. And I don't, I don't think there is a clear answer and I'm still figuring it out. I just want to acknowledge that that's hard. And maybe if you're going through something similar, like I'm struggling too, but I I do think that over long periods of time, it gets better just in that either things slightly improve or you figure out how to balance your life better so that you can handle it better. I also will say I've been so fortunate to have the most supportive, loving family and friends. I mean, people have just truly shown me what kindness is by how some of my friends and my family has responded to all this. And I'm so grateful to them. And it's given me a lot of strength and hope. Along with hearing other people's stories, I think that's the other thing that's been the biggest help is just a social support system that is just stellar. I also want to acknowledge that I have had a lot of trouble navigating the medical care system. It's been really hard with funding for certain treatments and insurance and getting certain records to different places and scheduling many, many, many different appointments. But I also have to acknowledge, even with the challenges I've faced in the medical system, I've also been very privileged. I've had a lot of opportunities medically given to me, probably even the way I'm treated in some cases and also that social support system I mentioned I've had a lot of privilege and there are lots of people who don't experience the privilege I had and recognize that probably a lot needs to change in our society so that more people can get more opportunities. That's probably a topic for a different video, but I don't know. Even with that privilege, it has been hard to navigate all this. So I can't imagine what even some other people experience. I also have to say one thing that I've struggled with is just the ongoing symptoms. The fact that I'm still constantly at every single moment of the day experiencing symptoms. Some days are definitely better than others. Some days I'm able to function at a higher capacity than others. Some mornings are great and then the afternoons aren't so good. It just depends on the day. But I've never had a moment where they've entirely gone away. It is the weirdest thing. It's like my whole perception of reality has changed and it likely will never ever be the same again. Like what it was for the first 30 years of my life is now totally it totally transformed. It's just kind of wild. I think another challenge I faced with this is living with the reality that someday this could progress into something far more serious. I feel like a lot of people have told me in this process that, you know, it must be hard to live with this doubt and to not know what's going to happen with your body. But to me, the doubt is the gift. Like, the possibility that things might actually be okay, that's a really good gift to have. It's the reality that things could get a lot worse that's scary. Like I think that doubt is a gift. And I mean, all of us live with doubt all the time in many different ways in our lives. When we go out every day into the world, something could happen and we have to live with that doubt. But thank goodness for us being able to live with that doubt. Anyway, I'm getting off topic, but I feel like there's a lot of negativity I just expressed. But I also think that this diagnosis has made me reprioritize and think about my time and my energy in entirely new ways. And in that sense, it is kind of a gift. Like it's such a cliche, but it puts things in perspective. And because I don't have as much energy anymore, I have to be more thoughtful about where I put my energy and how I spend my time. And it forces me to be more intentional. It also gives a challenge that I have to face or overcome as opposed to finding challenges elsewhere in my life. I think all of us need some kind of tension in the story of our lives. And in my case, it's the specific thing that I need to face and reckon with. Whereas for others, maybe it's more just like the monotony or something else in their lives that's less defined, if that makes sense. So in that sense, I'm grateful for it and that it's this thing that I can look at and face and acknowledge and try to tackle. And I've learned a lot from that. And it 
it helps me be grateful for the good things that I have in my life because I do have a lot of great stuff. I have the most amazing husband, Andy. I have a loving family. I have just such great, fun, intelligent friends. And I do have a lot to be grateful for. And my symptoms are getting to a place where I'm doing my best to manage them and they could be far more severe. And I do want to end on a more positive note that I'm still navigating this. I'm still learning from this, but every person's experience with MS is different. If you're someone who's experiencing it, just know my story is not your story. Every person is different. And also, even if you don't have MS specifically, but maybe you're dealing with some other physical or even mental challenge, just know that you're not alone, that we all have things that we struggle with and face that are hard in life. That is the nature of life. And it's okay because it's human and we are not alone in that. You are not alone if you're going through something tough. You are not alone. I guess that's all I have to say today. But thank you for doing me the honor of listening to my story. If you got this far, that was a kindness because I think the kindest thing we can do for others is to listen. So I appreciate you doing that for me in this. And yeah, that's all I've got for you. But thank you again. And I wish you all the best in whatever journey or challenge you may be facing right now. Okay. Bye.